Right. So we've got our appended data. What else do we need to do on here? Um, we've got our customer location products uh, and salespeople as well. I want to see so that we don't have to load because we've got these two tables already here in the sales data. I want to right click and, and disable load. I want to tell it not to bring these in because we've got them in the in the sales data already. Um, so this would not would not really be adding that extra load basically into our data. Uh, and just to confirm that what I did now has not removed them from the sales data. Let me check um, if we've got other years. Um, if we've got 20 years, we've still got the rest of the years in. So that's fine. Okay. So um, I did say that we need to make our own date table. And since we already know how to use DAX using the calendar function or formula to make a date, um, let's let's use the table code, um, which which is the one I normally use anyway. So to use the table table code, I'm just going to open it. It's this is what I sent to the to the charts. Um, so this is what the code looks like, and you really don't need to understand it. You know, but if you remember our um, advanced edit editor, uh, which I will open now as well, it's just a code that has been pre-generated, you know, that we can use to make our own dates. And within that, we will have a year quarter, um, according to how many years we decide to put in, um, months, week ending, week number, all of that would be made for us already. So we don't, we won't have to start making them one by one, uh, one column after the other, like we are used to. So if we go back into our Power Query Editor, I'm just going to click on here on this right side. Okay. So I'm just going to right click, just I'm, don't worry because this cursor is on here. You don't worry about that. So I'm going to right click on here and uh, I want a new query. I want to make a new query. And that query, I want it to be a blank one. I want to start afresh, okay? So I'm right-clicking on, on the side, okay? And um, new query, and of the new queries, I want this blank, okay? If we don't want to do it like that, let me see if we can get a blank query from here as well, yes. If you don't want to use the right clicking that I just showed now, you can actually get blank query also from here. Okay. So those are the two ways to get your blank query. Okay. But I'm used to doing it like this. So I'm going to go blank query, you know, and let's see what happens. So it forms this, which is blank. We we see that query, query one, you know, it's blank. So while we are still on it, nothing is happening within it. I'm going into its advanced editor. I go into the advanced editor and this is all we have here, uh, within the advanced editor, the simplest form, nothing. Let source equals in source. Nothing is all just blank apart from the let source equals in source, okay? So I'm going to go into my, into this and pick everything and just copy. I'm just going to control C that. So I'm going to copy all of these into that um, advanced editor. Um, I don't want anything here. Um, so, so just that copy and paste, and I'm, I'm going to say that I'm done. Let's see what happens. And it brings these parameters to be entered. So it's asking me that for this, date table I'm making, what's going to be my start date? We know our data starts from 28. So I'm going to enter the, the earliest date in 2018, uh, which is um, 0101, 2018, you know, and I'm going to end it in 2020, the, the very last day, 
in 2020. Okay, and it's asking for the financial year. Uh, for some, for most companies, is for April is the start of the financial year. Uh, but we have some uh, that use January. Okay, but uh, because um April is mo most common, I will put four there, uh, as the financial year start month. So I put four there, and I'm going to tell you to invoke this. Okay. And that's it. That's our date table formed. It calls it invoked for function, but I'm going to change that name to date table. All right. So we can see every day within from 2018 to 2020, 1st of January, 2nd of January, 3rd of Jan January, and it goes on and on and on like that to the end of 2020 has been made for us, you know? And apart from that, it's, it's made the years out. So we can see uh, 2018, 2019, 2020, you know, it, we don't have more. That's all there is there. Um, let's take, that shouldn't be added on. Then it's it's gone on to do the quarter. So quarter one to four. So we can see the quarter, then the months, in terms of the month number. So I'm going to change this to month number because it may come in handy. Okay. Then the, the day of the month, you know, we don't necessarily need all of these dates. Um, dates um, inter, in, in, date int, I don't know what that is. I will take it out. Um, so in January, um, month name, we need the month name or we may need it, so I'll leave it alone. Um, month and uh, month and year, this should, this should be month and year, I can rename that to month and year. Okay, um, and this is quarter and year as well. Okay, so just that renaming to suit your own purpose is all you need to do here. Uh, take out what you don't need and leave what you need in. Okay, um, day in week, maybe not. Well, day in week, maybe it's day zero, one, two, up to seven, I believe, uh, till Sunday. Possibly, yeah. Okay, since it started from zero, it's ending it with six. Don't just start with one, we'll end it in, in seven. Okay, but again, I don't need this for the for this. Um, most of the time, it's good to leave them in because again, you never just you just never know how your data, how your report is going to grow over time. Everything I'm saying, I don't need this, I don't need that. I mean, now it may appear like I don't need it. But does it hurt to leave them in? Because if it's needed in the future, then it's right there to it's right there to use. Okay. So it's your call. But like I always say, let's always um remember to think of the future uh, when we are building our report. And this is just for short year. If you don't want the full 2018, 20, 2019. And all of that, and that's how to make a date table using the that that code. That code is free. It saves time. Within seconds, you already have, you know, all of the, all of the dates that you need and all of the columns in as well. Is that part? Is this part clear? Of the of making your date table, is it clear? Is the date table extracting data from the source data? We it's not it's not necessarily extracting um dates from the from the data, but we have used the dates within the this data to make it. Okay. Yes. So if I had decided to to use 2013 when I was making it, it would just bring 2013. So yeah. and we don't have 2013 in our data. Yes. 
So, because what, it has been that, that part again. This, this, oh, okay. This. Yes, yes. Okay. So, how we made this date table, Um, I'm going to delete it. No? Okay. No, I won't delete it. Okay. So, I just right-clicked and because I'm forming a new query from the from the start, from the scratch, I used blank query. Another way to, to find blank queries under new source, you've got your blank query here, okay? And it, 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 it names it query, okay? And at the moment we can see it's all blank, nothing is in it. Remember how I said that um, all these steps that we see in, the, in our applied steps, they are stored in, in the advanced editor they are stored like a code, okay? Because we see the source. That's the source there, and it's telling us what the source is, you know, um, and the name of the data, customer data, uh, data source is that, okay? And then uh, navigation is the next one, and then it's changed type. And we can see that it's the last step here. It says changed type equals the formula that I used to change the type and exactly what it did there in the last step, which is the change type. Uh, that's how to read an advanced editor. You don't have to understand this more than the fact that it's what we have in the apply step that are recorded here as, as a kind of code, okay? If I've got another data set similar to this or exactly this, and I've got to build another Power BI, uh, report. I can always just come here, copy this, insert it into that new Power BI report, and I don't have to do any step from the beginning. It will just quickly get us to this step, which is what I've just done with the date table that we just saw now. Okay. So that's the part of the advanced editor. Okay. So if we go back to our blank query, which is blank, so I'm saying that this code has been written for making date table. And all I have to do is insert it into that advanced editor to, to make my own date table. Who wrote it? It was passed down. I don't know the source, but it was passed down. Okay. Oh, okay. I can not get access to it. I mean, if you are somebody who is just new, how do you work? How do you know to go and find this kind of code and then be able to use it? I, you, you already have it. I sent it to you, like okay, it was sent yeah. to me as well. Okay. <laughs> it was, you see, when I was, when I was <laughs> learning Power BI, it was straight away passed down to me. The guy was even saying free of charge, you take, take, imagine, it was a free of charge. <laughs> so now you are getting it as well. So keep passing it, you know, and keep, keep modifying it to what you need. It does the job. Okay. Yeah, sorry, man. Yeah. Is this is this just uh, is this a standard for any um, analysis on the um, Power BI? Is it a standard? I mean, all these codes. So this, yeah. the standard is that uh, for Power BI is that if you are doing anything time related in your report, you you have to have a separate date table. Don't rely only on the date within your data have a separate date table, okay? Because within your data, there might be gaps and stuff like that. Date table helps to uh, bridge the gap of some inconsistencies that could happen. It's just like a standard practice, okay? And that's because you are building a report that's got to do with time, okay? That is the standard practice. Now, using this exact code is not a standard practice. You can build your date table uh, uh, however you know how to. We have seen in class when Mr. Azim formed the calendar table. Okay, when we get into, into, when we close and apply this, I will show you. You don't have to use this. It's just, this is very fast because it gets the job done within seconds. That was, that was going to be my next question because I remember when Mr. Azim was doing his own, um, he did it just when, we needed to start uh, um, doing the dashboard. And he yeah. said that the reason he didn't do it quite early is that so that uh, um, it can be it, it can be up to date. It can be it can be 
I don't know, I use this term that it can be uh, automated, you know, when there is a, um, there's a change or something like that. That's, that, that's why it waited to the very last minute. But, but in your own case now, um, you bid it, you know, at the early stage, but it will still do the same job, right? Exa exactly, exactly. It will still do the same job. Um, I think if I remember correctly, what Mr. Azim explained was he used two different uh, examples, uh, ways of, or, or form formulas, the calendar and the calendar auto. The calendar, you would insert the start and the end of the, of the dates that you want in your date table. But the calendar auto would automatically scan through your data and pick the beginning and the end up and form the date table based on that. Okay? That's what I remember about that uh, that formula. But it it doesn't whether you build from the from the start or from the end, you have your date table is is what matters, you know. And then um, yes, from the onset, if you are building, you can use this method. If you are going to use the other method, you have you have to close and apply. You have to be within Power BI at the moment we are in Power Query Editor. You have to be within the Power BI itself to to do the DAX that forms that one. Does that uh, make sense, sir? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Do you still want me to carry on with this second day table or we can't, we should continue? Uh, yes, please, because I want to see the re uh, date range you used the other time. Oh, oh okay, okay. Yeah, so I'm just going to copy this, Control A and Control C that. And then we come into the into the blank query, I will open its advanced uh, editor um, and I'm going to just paste over everything that's here. Okay, so, and um, I will click on done. And now it's asking us for the parameters. What's the start date? In our data, the start date is um, 2018, you know? And there, there is no, uh, it's not like set in stone. I can decide to start my date table a month before step. Okay, it's just that within the date, date, data set, there's nothing for 2017. So what's the point? Okay, but if I put so December, like 1st of December, 2017, it will bring all of those dates for me. Okay, it will bring all of the dates. But right now it's 01, 01, 2018. That's our earliest, 2018. I was actually looking for that one. So um, this date you have to manually put it there. Uh, you can you cannot uh, point, point. You can you can use this. It's just that yeah because I've already put it. You can use this, but this I'll be clicking to get to twenty eighteen. So I think I feel like it's faster for me to just enter it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You are welcome. And my financial year starts for four. It can be first, it's normally January or, or April. I'll invoke that. And it's called it invoke function, uh, but it's, it's actually dates, okay? And uh, you have all of those, uh, the actual dates, the year, the, the quarter, the month, and all of that in there. I just want to quickly show how you link it to, does that, is that clearer now? Yes, please. Yes, thank you. Okay. So, but because we don't need it, I'm going to disable the load of it. Uh, I'll close and apply. Okay. So it's, I think it's loading. Yes, it's still loading it. So, when we get here, when it's loaded, we are just going into the into the data model to see what's happening with our model. If the relationships have not been picked, we pick, we put, you know, we link the relationships all together, even the date table as well. This um this Power BI has been open for a few days now, so you would. Excuse it, it's it's loaded. It for 200 years, 200 years ago. <laughs> yes, you can. I think I said that again. I've not closed it since.
the day that we started. Right, so here we, we, we have it. And then if I go into the, still coming up on that side. Come on now. There we go. So if I go into the data model, Mm -hmm. Let's see what has happened. Of course, we know that uh, this is our this is our our many table the sales data. So sales the sales uh, sales person ID has found the sales person ID. Can you see? So that relationship has been formed. Location has also found ID has also found location ID on that or that, you know, data, uh, yeah, on, on the table. So products as well, they found each other, product ID. Okay, it's only my date table that has not been formed yet. So customer ID has found customer ID. So what we now need to do is, the purchase date is the date on here. So I, however you wanna drag it, I'm just going to drag dates into the purchase dates to form that relationship. And there yeah, we have it, one to many as well has been formed, okay? So um, from this point, we can just start to start, you know, we can we, or actually we'll, we'll need to do our DAPs, okay? Total sales is the major thing we are working with, okay? So um, I'm just going to create a, a fresh table and you don't have to, you can you can do your DAPs on any, anywhere, on any of these tables, it's just good to have it separate, okay? So I'll make my total sales, um, which is going to be a very simple DAX within the, it's just that this is low, it should, it should already be loaded. Okay, so we have it. I'm going to say this is my key calculations, key calculations, calculations. or key measures, okay? They are going to go into this table. Um, and it's just one DAX that I will do now so that that would help you to start building. Um, and I'm just going to sum all of the all of the sales. Actually, it's not going to be that simple because in our sales, sales table, we don't really have a, the actual sales yet. So that needs to be calculated. We don't have time for that. Um, it's, it's already half seven. Okay, uh, where is the sales data? Yes, we have quantity and we have price, isn't it? We have the quantity that was bought and we have the price, okay? And we know that normally you will get the sales by multiplying quantity by, by price. Yeah, and it's not all of them that's one. I would just have gone for. So we have a few, a few that are not one, up to four. Okay. So I would say let's do a calculated column first on, on this sales data, you know, calculated column, um, new measure, new column. Um, and we can just multiply quantity by price. Okay, I don't know where you got your error, error from, but yeah, sales. Actually, it should just be sales, not total sales. Sales equals, then we can multiply price, price multiplied by, that's not the okay. That's the price. Sales data price. Can you see the confusion? We don't need this price. That's a function. We need the column itself multiplied by um, multiplied by 
uh, quantity. So I need quantity. Okay, and it's brought that. If, if you are trying to type and this doesn't come up, the, it's, it's called the IntelliSense. If it doesn't come up, then something is wrong. It has, it has to, you know, prompt what you have in your data and bring it up, okay? So if we enter that, that should give us the sales for all of this. Instead of error, should have sales. The first one should be 127, yes, okay? So, uh, and that's, we use DAX to make an extra column here, okay? Um, and then in my key measure, I can, or key calculation, I can now make a total sales that adds everything up now. All of the sales um, from top to bottom, that's going to be a measure. And I'm going to call it total sales and just sum the, the whole sales together. And that's all done for today. Um, when this my slow motion um, comes up. Total sales. Come on. Equals sum. So it's just normal sum. And immediately I, I press some, it's bringing all of the columns we have. But I need sales, so I'm going to go for, for S and it's bring sales, uh, sales data. I don't need sales people. I need sales data on sales. The last one, sales data sales. I'm summing up all of the sales we just calculated, which is on sales data table. Uh, yeah, sales data table, the column is sales, okay? Uh, before I press enter, how this is read, uh, after some within the square bracket, uh, sales data is the is the table where we are picking it from, picking our column from, and sales itself is that column. Okay, so it gives you the name of the table, then the name of the column uh, that that's you know that's on that table that you are currently using. That's how that naming is done. We'll explain that better. Uh, maybe tomorrow. But yes, now we have that calculation and you can you can validate to, to see if there is anything in it because sometimes it's, it's just blank. You think you have done a good job only to find blank there, which means something is wrong. Hopefully this isn't blank. Um, and it's gone on to put a comma separator, which is good for us, okay? So if I come here, and just quickly check that there is something good in that calculation. I'm just gonna get a card just to, and drag it into a card just to be sure that we are fine. The total sales uh, is coming up. Okay, so yes, we are we we are good. You know, we are good. So so with these total sales, you can just slice by location. You can slice by countries. You can slice by everything that you find in this data set. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening. Um,